beautiful drone night shots oh hell yeah now we're talking so as a drone cinematographer i shoot almost entirely at golden hour and at night so i put together my five most important tips for cleaner night shots with any flying camera when you start to grasp these concepts you're going to really understand exposure and cinematography on a much deeper level oh you guys are going to love this we're starting with an old industry trick used in Hollywood and professional photography you guys are going to find very valuable. I was on a tiny island in Indonesia. I couldn't sleep, so I took a walk and I saw these seaweed farmers working under a full moon. The stunning color, the exotic sounds, the volcanoes in the background. I was mesmerized. I ran back and grabbed my drone. I put it up and the drone saw this. This is what my eyes saw. And this is what the drone saw. And if you try to brighten an underexposed image in editing, you get noise. I simply had to recreate that gorgeous moonlight scene I witnessed. It was a special moment also because I got to know the family of seaweed farmers and hear the story of their struggles. I ended up creating a video to help generate awareness and raise money for them. There's a link down below in the show notes if you want to check it out. So to create that stunning moonlight shot, I'll show you this time shift editing technique. Then we'll go to the four other great night drone tips coming up. You guys will find real value in this time shift editing technique. For example, when you're on vacation or just exploring out in nature, you find a beautiful scene, you would love to see it at night, but oh, there's no street lights, no business signs to illuminate the shot. Now I got inspired to explore this deeper by my favorite street photographer. Fan Ho. He doesn't use artificial lights, just ambient light for his perceived night shots. He was known to be heavy handed with the dodge and burn technique. So through editing, like I'm showing you here, he can adjust the overall exposure to create moody dark scenes that might not be possible if actually shot at night. For example, in this shot, first impression is it's a night shot, but I'm guessing it's shot during the day shot exactly as I'm teaching here with this time shift technique. So there's enough sunlight to illuminate all of these tiny details in the shot. Look, you can see the texture on the walls, the barbed wire fencing, the dirty vents there. So it's my guess this perceived night shot was actually shot during the day for two reasons. First, the angle of the shadows. Second, all of those amazing details would be impossible, in my opinion, if it was actually taken at night. I don't think they had F1.2 lenses back then. No crazy fast prime. So this time shift concept is what I'm demonstrating in this first drone night shot tip. You do this time shift technique by filming when there's enough ambient natural light to illuminate the important details in the scene. Kind of like a rim light in a studio. Editing step one, increase the gamma to darken the overall image. The amount will vary depending on how much detail is remaining and your personal preference. Then we're gonna cool the image to give that blue tone of blue hour into moonlight. You'll also want to experiment with pointing the camera down while recording these scenes so the sun, the horizon, is not in the shot. <laughs> yeah, you don't want the sun in your night shot. That requires pre-planning for this effect while recording. So try it out. Turn golden hour into a romantic evening scene or dusk into a moody night shot. And I have great news. You're now visualizing creative shots, planning the shot for the edit. So you are now officially thinking like a genuine cinematographer. Ha <laughs> ha, now go practice. This is awesome. We're moving on people. Now, a quick word from our sponsor that makes this channel possible. So last year, my bank account got wiped out. They didn't get a whole lot, <laughs> I'll tell you that. But I have no idea if they also got my social security number or my other identity information. It doesn't feel good. And this crime is increasing every year around the world. So our sponsor is Aura. They actively monitor your bank accounts, credit files, social security number, driver's license, home title, all sensitive pieces of information for any signs of fraud and it alerts you in real time. And does it for all members of your family. So your kids, your parents, grandparents, make sure everyone is safe. 
They have a free 14 day trial, so you can go through the setup process, meet your agent, see if it's right for you. There's a link down below to check it out. Thank you to the kind folks at Aura. The most important consideration with night drone shots is you don't want your scene to be underexposed, meaning too dark when recording. Because when you try to brighten it in editing, you get, yep. So you always want correct exposure or a little too bright is okay. You can darken it in editing a little with no artifacts. Correct exposure is the thing to focus on for clean night shots. It's easy. Look at your exposure meter. It's that MM or EV number. You know, it's amazing how important that little number is and just how tiny it is on the screen. So zero is correct exposure. All right, auto exposure. You know, I've always had great luck with auto exposure at night in my DJI drones. I did extensive testing for myself and I found that it does a really good job. For example, this is my Mini 2 at night in auto exposure. This is a very dark night shot and there is zero noise. That is exceptional. I use auto exposure at night frequently. Don't be scared to use it. In fact, I encourage it because your chance of hitting something at night is greatly increased, especially if you're constantly monitoring your exposure and ma making adjustments to your settings, you're highly distracted. So using auto exposure, you can now focus 100% on not crashing and cinematography. But I know many guys think they're more professional if they use manual exposure. So let's look at the exposure triangle settings. If your flying camera has adjustable aperture, lucky dog, keep it wide open at night. Now ISO, you generally wanna keep it as low as possible. I don't know what drone you have, so I can't give you an exact number to not exceed. Every drone is different, but start in your lowest ISO setting first. Then we're gonna adjust the shutter speed. And if we need to, we'll go back and adjust the ISO. We'll lift it until we've got correct exposure. Now, shutter speed. You can go with a very low shutter speed at night because motion blur is generally much harder to notice. Going with the slowest shutter speed possible, talking video mode here, will really help to brighten your scene and keep the ISO as low as possible. It's called cheating the shutter. <laughs> when you adjust the shutter speed off the 180 degree rule. That actually be a pretty cool t-shirt, right? Cheating the shutter. <laughs> so yeah, at night, there's generally no need to be dogmatic to the 180 degree shutter rule. So one thing to remember, with a very slow shutter speed is move the drone slowly. We go into that deeper in tip number three. Now, frame rates. Generally speaking, avoid higher frame rates at night, 60 frames a second, 120 frames a second, because they require a faster shutter speed. Now, if your night scene is very bright, you can try slow motion. You might be able to get away with it. I love slow motion, and I have successfully taken slow motion at night, but it needs a pretty bright night scene. So do your testing. Get a sense of when you can use slow motion at night with your drone. It's a beautiful effect. Lastly, the denoise setting in the Mini 3 Pro and some other DJI models. <laughs> I still haven't tested it enough to give a meaningful opinion on it. I apologize, guys. Camera movement at night. I wanna restate the importance of not moving the drone quickly at night because generally you're at a slower shutter speed. If you're at a slow shutter and you move fast, your footage will be blurry. The second reason to consider moving slow at night is more of a cinematography standpoint. The camera movement is a distinct style choice by the cinematographer. So if your scene is dark and romantic and you want the camera movement to match that mood. Oh, that's a whole long discussion. The art of camera movement. Maybe a full episode on that coming up. Also consider this. Night footage can be a little bit harder for the viewer to digest if the drone is really moving fast. The lights can get streaky and unclear. So definitely moving slower at night is much clearer for the viewer. Now this is pretty obvious, but I see a lot of beginner drone footage making this mistake. Filming when there's just not enough overall light in the scene. If you're in a city, it can be easier to find enough ambient light 
to make the scene interesting. If you're in a more rural spot, it can be impossible to find enough artificial lights at night. In that case, there literally are no tips. There has to be enough light present. No editing tricks or setting tips can help. Your only option is to try that time shift technique to transform dusk into night. Don't forget to get different perspectives at night. You know, I found I fall into this bad habit where at night, if I see a close shot, I get all excited and I forget to pull back and get like a wide shot and a medium shot. This is called an establishing shot and it gives context to the setting of your scene for your viewer. You want to do this for day and night shots, but for some reason, I know I tend to forget more establishing shots at night. It's just a cinematography workflow habit that gets reinforced over time the more you use that muscle. Now, I made this entire episode here explaining what the hell is drone cinematography. I'm actually pretty darn proud of this video. So, I hope you got real value from today's episode. Please let me know your questions. Check out this episode to continue your drone cinematography journey. <laughs> All right, I'll see you in the next episode, my flying filmmaker friends.